Thank you for joining me again tonight on another Getting to Know the Faith in the One True Church. Paragraph 6. Man. Verse 355. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Man occupies a unique place in creation. He is in the image of God. In his own nature, he unites the spiritual and material worlds. He has created male and female. God established him in his friendship. Verse 356, in the image of God. Of all visible creatures, only man is able to know and love his creator. He is the only creature on the earth that God has willed for its own sake. And he alone is called to share by knowledge and love in God's own life. It was for this end that he was created. And this is the fundamental reason for his dignity. What made you establish man in so great a dignity? Certainly the incalculable love by which you have looked on your creature and yourself. You are taken with love for her. For by love indeed you created her. By love, you have given her a being capable of tasting your eternal good. Being in the image of God, the human individual possesses the dignity of a person who is not just something, but someone. He is capable of self-knowledge, of self-possession, and of freely giving himself and entering into communion with other persons. And he is called by grace to a covenant with his creator to offer him a response of faith and that no other creature can give in his stead. Verse 358, God created everything for man, but man in turn was created to serve and love God and to offer all creation back to him. What is it that is about to be created that enjoys such honor? It is man, that great and wonderful living creature, more precious in the eyes of God than all other creatures. For him, the heavens and the earth and the sea and all the rest of creation exist. God attached so much importance to his salvation that he did not spare his own son for the sake of man, nor does he ever cease to work, trying every possible means until he has raised man up to himself and made him sit at his right hand. In reality, it's only the mystery of the word made flesh that the mystery of man truly becomes clear. St. Paul tells us that the human race takes its origin from two men, Adam and Christ. The first man, Adam, he says, became a living soul. The last Adam, a life-giving spirit. The first Adam was made by the last Adam, from whom he also received his soul to give him life. The second Adam stamped his image on the first Adam when he created him. That is why he took on himself the role in the name of the first Adam, in order that he might not lose what he had made in his own image. The first Adam, the last Adam, the first had been beginning. The last knows no end. The last Adam is indeed the first, as he himself says. I am the first and the last. Verse 360. Because of its common origin, the human race forms a unity. For from one ancestor God made all nations to inhabit the whole earth. O oh, wondrous vision which makes us contemplate the human race in the unity of its origin in God and the unity of its nature composed equally in all men of a material body and a spiritual soul in the unity of its immediate end and its mission in the world and in the unity of its dwelling, the earth, whose benefits all men by right of nature may use to sustain and develop life in the unity of its supernatural end God himself to whom all ought to tend in the unity of the means for attaining this end, in the unity of the redemption wrought by Christ for all. Verse 361, this law of human solidarity and charity without excluding the very rich variety of persons, cultures, and people assures us that all men are truly brethren. Thank you for listening. God bless you, and I love you.